I apologize for the delay. Um, so we'll call this uh, public caucus to order. Tonight we have um, our executive director of OECD, Eileen Cipriani, uh, Mayor Paige Cognetti, and Rich Overmeyer from uh, Fourth Economy, um, who was our consultant on our uh, economic development strategy. Um, so uh, I know you have a presentation, so the floor is yours. My, I'm sorry, could you turn the... Um, we met, I believe, even Christmas Eve morning. Um, so we've been together via Zoom, but it's really nice, Rich, to meet you in person. And we're excited to have Rich present to you all. He and his team uh, have really been in such close touch with us and dozens and dozens of community members um, from all across Scranton to help us formulate a strategy going forward for economic development, for community development. Um, there's there's some pieces in here that are you know facts and figures that are, are really stark. There's you know it's it, we're trying to get somewhere. We're all trying to get somewhere together to increase the quality of life here, to grow our economy. There there are things that are difficult though, right? Our median wage here is thirty nine thousand dollars, but our living wage is fifty thousand. There's some some figures in the in the research that Fourth Economy has done and that Rich will share that are really important for us in this room, but especially in our community to really internalize so we know where we're starting from, that we know where we're going and, and work together to figure out how to get there. So we're excited, Rich, to have you here and thanks for driving from Pittsburgh on a rainy day. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, it's nothing like getting back into travel by uh, driving through fog for a couple hours from, from Pittsburgh, but I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Um, yeah, so I know, I recognize that you guys, I think, have to move on at 6.30, so I'm going to try to present some information to you. I'll try to pace it so that I can get through that and we can have some dialogue. I'm happy to share the slides with you, and then if there's follow-up as well that you may have, because there is some data-dense slides in here, to the mayor's point. Um, yeah, this is what we'll cover today, so I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, fourth Economy, we're a little bit of a unique team, and you'll see that in some of the work that, as we kind of go through, we think very broadly and holistically about economic development. There are a lot of factors that can, that can dictate uh, you know, really the strength, the economic strength of a community. And so we get into things like housing, uh, we get into things like infrastructure, some traditional things, but other things like the talent uh, and the livability in a community are things that we look at. Throughout this, this is the process that we've been engaged in. Um, we're at that point where we have a lot of ideas, we're advancing those ideas right now, so it's a good timing for us to be able to present to you today, get some feedback and dialogue going. Uh, hopefully it starts today and it continues through the process. Uh, to the mayor's point, we've had a lot of engagement in the community. We've been interviewing people one-on-one. -on -one. This number keeps growing in terms of the one-on-one -on -one interviews. We've also done build sessions, which we had 60 members of the community participating. Those sessions are, are really meant to uh, have folks in the community identify what are the solutions to the opportunities or the challenges that have been identified. And so we had a lot of participation, again, via Zoom on those, but I think we had folks uh, dial in from every one of the neighborhoods. So it was really exciting to see that. Uh, we've also done a number of small group sessions of working through, uh, you know, uh, working through different ideas uh, through the process. And we have a community survey that's actually still live right now. Uh, we're getting close to about 1,000 people starting the survey. Um, we would like to see more representation from the minority community. We see the numbers aren't matching up completely to what the census, the, the demographics are here in the community. So we're, we're hoping to keep uh, pushing that survey out as we're refining our thoughts. There's a couple of expert observations. Hopefully you guys uh, recognize us as experts, but uh, we do this kind of work around the country. Um, and so, you know, every time we come into a new community, we start, you know, taking snapshots of what we're seeing in the community. Um, there's a couple of things I just wanted to share, you know, from our perspective. One, we do think you're at an inflection point. I think the leaving Act 47 is a catalyst to really build confidence back in the community. As was noted, I'm from Pittsburgh. Uh, we obviously went through a similar journey. Um, that moment that Act 47 was lifted, I think it really did change the demeanor of a lot of people in the community and started people thinking proactively again about partnership between the city, community, and economic development. Um, I think, you know, I think there's the moment we're hearing it in people's voices uh, of this mindset from scarcity to opportunity. Um, you know, there are a lot of resources that are available right now uh, to invest in economic development, to invest in infrastructure, and I think that's changing people's attitudes. Um, and that's really important. I think these economic development can't be a zero-sum game where you're pitting one type of uh, economic opportunity against another. It really is meant to be something that you can grow. 
Um, there's an energy, those 60 people, all the interviews, we're seeing a lot of energy and that's really going to be critically important to Im implementation of this plan. So we're trying to harness that um, as we think about the execution part of the plan. Um, I think, you know, Scranton is a changing community, like every community that, that we're working in. Um, I think it really requires a new definition and a thinking about what, what is Scranton today. Um, and I think that's something that hopefully the plan is reflecting where those opportunities are and kind of level sets folks in terms of what the future can, can hold. Um, and I think, yeah, obviously I think their approach is to work on, you know, really what is that course for investment and success? We're working on that with the team right now. All the work that we've been doing is kind of, we've uh, kind of boiled down into five strategic pillars. And this is what you'll, I think this is the framing that you'll see in the final plan. So you see those here, industry, talent, attraction, the communities, uh, identity and neighborhood investment, infrastructure and housing. We think as we've looked at the data, have looked at the input from the community, these are the five areas that folks want to see movement on and progress on. And we do think there's opportunities embedded in each one of those. To the mayor's point, there are a couple of big things that cut across those, though. I think the, the wage level is one thing that I have another chart in here that kind of breaks this down a little more for you. But it is something that's stark um, when you look at the livable wage in Lackawanna County. So that's, you know, a family of uh, two with one working adult. I'm sorry, a family of two uh, adults and children uh, with one uh, wage earner. The, the livable wage is 50000 But you see the median wage in Lackawanna at 35 and in the city at 30. Um, that makes it difficult. Obviously, it reduces the quality of life for people that are in the community because of those wages. It makes housing, it makes transportation more difficult. Um, we certainly see small business, and again, there'll be some data, but you know, small business is key as part of this plan. It is what is the backbone of the community. Um, but you know, I think we see the need for more lending activity uh, in the community. And some of this data you'll see throughout, some of it's Lackawanna County because that's the level at which you can get it. Some of it where we can, it, it'll be at the city level. Uh, throughout, we make sure we, we specify which. Um, and obviously education, I think everybody knows education is such an important uh, tool for economic development. I think more people in our field are recognizing its critical importance. Um, and so there you see some data that where Scranton lags the county and state uh, in terms of educational attainment um, that does hold implications. You know, if you're going to match the needs of industry of some form of credential coming out of education, it doesn't always have to be bachelor's or higher, but some form of uh, academic credential is going to be key in the new economy. So I'm just going to kind of go through, and a couple of these I may skip just from a timing standpoint. Um, we have, luckily, we have some summary slides, so I think those are the major takeaways that, that we have sort of in from the data. Um, so you'll see some things that we've, we've looked at. So uh, there's kind of this mixed trend where the city's uh, lost about 2,000 jobs uh, from 2008 to 2018. Um, and lost about 1,500 um, employed residents, um, but the population grew. So um, we're getting close to pre-recession peaks, but there's a little bit of room for improvement there. You have you've have seen this shift in the type of industry that's in the community. Um, so you see healthcare adding jobs, education adding jobs, uh, while retail has been losing, um, which is not, again, not unique uh, to the community, but it does talk to the, or speak to the shift that's happening in the type of employment opportunities. Um, the one thing that concerns us a bit is the, the decline in professional, technical, and other services. The, what are the more high paying, above median wage jobs? You've seen, we've seen a decrease in those. One other thing that's caused some uh, pause for our team is the low labor force particip participation rate um, and low unemployment. I think more of the participation rate is something um, that, you know, basically it's, it's low at 57%, which is about 3% lower than the county and 7% lower than the U.S. It could be a variety of things. Either there's not the infrastructure, infrastructure to support people going to work. Certainly in the last two years, things like childcare um, have become a critical flaw in a lot of communities and a need uh, to really re revisit the childcare system and how to allow people to get back into the workforce. Plus, you see some retirements. There is an age demographic. You see more retirees living there that's probably contributing to some of that. We do see some wage growth, but again, still losing ground relative to the U.S. I'll send these to you. This, this will give you the detail about where those job losses, the sectors uh, that lost the jobs. Um, you know, there are some bright spots. I think the, the growth of the finance sector is something that we want to hopefully continue to, to invest in, and see that happen because, again, if you look at the median wage there to the right, that's one of the ones that's above that, that threshold that we want to see. Um, and then you see throughout um, where the losses and the gains are with each one of these. One of the other areas that we've been looking at is, is looking at the declining business birth rate. So the blue um, is Lackawanna at the bottom there. Overall in the U.S. you've seen this, this trend. One of the things that we won't know for a year or two, I mean, we're seeing uh, skyrocketing numbers of people starting businesses. We're hearing that anecdotally in the community. So 
I think right now is a time that we've got to lean in as, as an economic development profession and help those small business survive and then hopefully thrive. Um, people are just out of necessity forming new businesses. And so it's an opportunity for, I think, for Scranton and other communities to really make sure that those folks are able to thrive here in the community. One of the key supports is a uh, small business loan. So it's one area that we're working on is our, you know, looking at a recommendation around how do we uh, increase the pipeline of small business loans uh, so that you're on pace with uh, U.S. numbers. So again, the, the bottom line there is Scranton's number compared to Lackawanna, which is at the top line. So uh, we're trying to get balance, better balance in that. A couple other stats. I mean, looking at minority, I think there's higher level of women and minority uh, businesses in, the, in Lackawanna County. I'm sorry, in Scranton than in Lackawanna County. Um, which is great. I think, we want, again, we want to hopefully continue to see that, that trend. And again, as other capital comes online, make sure that's focused. A um, couple key findings on the talent side. Um, I think one is the changing face of education. The, our K through 12 schools in Scranton serve approximately 60% non-white students. 75% uh, of them are ec considered economically disadvantaged. Again, relates back to that median wage uh, issue. And 10% are English learning language. Um, it, I think there's mixed data right now on where the district is growing or shrinking. Um, and graduation rates are just slightly lower than the US, or I'm sorry, than the state average. One area of opportunity we think is the disconnected youth. There are 2,500 uh, folks that are considered disconnected youth in the community. These are 16 to 24 year olds. I think we're seeing that increasing. I think so that's an opportunity to have programming to get those folks back into education, get them into the workforce productively. Uh, the pandemic we're seeing throughout the state, um, and certainly we're seeing this in the region, that that number is gonna increase because people have walked away because of the situation that we've all been dealing with. Um, yeah, I'll move on. So this, yeah, this breaks down that stat in terms of the living wage versus median wage. Um, so it's just such a stark, I think when we started digging into this, we had to check our numbers because it is just stark when you look at Lackawanna County uh, versus, you know, the median wage of being uh, 35,712 and in the, in the Scranton being 30,000. So at 30,000, that's $14 and 45 cents an hour. Uh, versus the living wage, which is 24.39 for the county. So there's a lot of room for improvement there, and hopefully, you know, the part of this plan is going to try to address how do we start making headways in that to bring up uh, the opportunities for folks to make more. There's some commuting data in here. I'm just going to be mindful of time. Um, yeah, again, education level. We see um, really this, this, in the city of Scranton, you see bachelor's degree or higher at 22%. Uh, anyway, anyway, on both of these, on high school and on the bachelor's, you see lower levels in Lackawanna County and even lower, lower levels in the U.S. So I think there's something there between the disconnected youth and those levels. Can we get people uh, the credential that's needed uh, to be, you know, uh, become, you know, more gainfully employed or, or uh, secure higher wages? Um, one of the things we're looking at too is, is really the changing demographics of the community. Um, the blue are, is Scranton and then Lackawanna is red. Um, you see a decrease in the white population, a little bit for both, uh, but then you see the increases, the influx of uh, you know, black African American, Asian, and then other races, which is a, a mix of other categories, um, which includes the Latino population that's been growing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, the other thing is we, you'll see data in these that really breaks down. We try to look at disaggregating the data uh, by race and ethnicity. Um, again, one of the things that in our work we try to look at, um, you know, the, the quality of life or the livability of a community uh, is not the same for all. And so I think one of the things in the data we try to look at are there economic disparities, are there social disparities? And so you'll see that throughout the data. Um, and it's something that, you know, as we think about then, what are the strategies? We've been working with the community to think about are there ways to address these uh, and improve the situation. And some of it's stark. I mean, when we get into this, I think you, even down to life expectancy. So I don't know if you've seen the research nationally around, you know, your, your uh, life expectancy is dictated a lot of times by your zip code because of the economic situation within those communities. We do see three census tracts within Scranton um, that have life expectancies of only 70 years. Um, you know, and then you see part of that is because of the economics of those communities. And then again, it's largely, um, the non-white community, non-Hispanic, um, and 60% of the households have those median incomes below that 35,000 even. So, um, you know, again, the life experience for those people is very different than the rest of Scranton. It's something that we've got to be concerned about. <clears throat> 
Uh, and then housing, uh, yeah, I think we see a couple different things here that we've looked at. Um, less than half of Scranton houses are owner occupied compared to 69% in Pennsylvania and 64 nationally. So you've got a lot of rental uh, properties in the community. Um, we've seen during the pandemic uh, throughout the eastern part of Pennsylvania, a significant inrush of outside capital too from New York and from other places. Um, we worry about that for the long term because it's, it's increasing that ratio and not in the direction I think that any of us want. And so I think we've got to be mindful of what to, to be focused on those uh, owners to make sure that they are good rental and, and good, good landlords. Um, again, you see issues because of the, the wage levels, the cost of living um, and cost burden households. You see a lot of that. Um, this is a map that shows you sort of where some of that cost burden and, and what that means is basically uh, the, their, uh, their wage rates don't match what the, what the cost is for the household. And so they're basically paying out more than they should be in their, their either their home ownership, their, their mortgages, or their rent, which creates you know issues on the other side of their lives. So they it makes it more difficult. And so the cost burden households, we want to see a better balance of what we're seeing in the community. Uh, and final thing is infrastructure. Um, so I think you know the, obviously it strengths the location and connectivity. And we've seen you know part of the growth that we've seen in, in people being attracted to the community are just the proximity um, and the resources here from infrastructure. Um, I think, you know, there are, there's an ongoing thought about improvements to some of the existing needs around streetscapes, the road, bridges, uh, stormwater, as I've seen even driving in today under the couple of the bridges. Um, there's obviously some need there for improvements. And then broadband, I think we've all, uh, we've, you know, for years we've been talking about broadband. I think it's become a critical issue now that every community is trying to fix. Um, and exciting to see, you know, the passenger rail expansion potential uh, and the ARPA funding coming in play. Uh, yeah, these are just summarizing that. So I guess, yeah, so in addition to our work, um, you know, we're also, you'll see, we're producing data around some additional baseline analysis, looking at sort of the neighborhood dynamic. It is such an interesting part of Scranton, the strength of the neighborhoods and the identity of those neighborhoods. So we're, we're, we're paying attention to make sure that we're talking through that. Um, and you also have other planning that's happening that we're integrating, at least because all these create the environment, the conditions that a strategic plan and economic development needs to operate in. And so, you know, even things like the school district plan are critically important, we see, uh, because of the talent, the education pipeline that's here. Um, obviously, the, you, know, you know these other things that probably, you've probably been seeing. Um, there'll be sort of reference as part of how those plans should be reflected as part of the economic development strategy. Um, in the strategy, uh, this is kind of a preview of what, what's going to be, we're putting together. So really thinking about, you know, what is the vision statement for the community? What are the goals that we see um, can be achieved uh, through this planning process um, and then through the implementation of that process? Um, really those five pillars that you see at the top there are really kind of how we're organizing it. Um, and right now we're working on um, really trying to identify, you know, how are we meeting the needs or the opportunities that, that you know, some of the things I've touched on and others. Um, who should own the ideas that are coming out of this? Um, some of it can be the city, but there are other partners also that need to lean in to think about the economic development strategy in this community. Um, it's, it definitely is a team sport in every community, and that's certainly the case. And people are willing to roll up their sleeves and, and participate. Um, we're also organizing, we're still playing around with language, but we're organizing around this framework of what can be done now over the next two to three years, and then what's next, the three to seven, and then a longer term vision. You know, some of the issues I've talked about here already um, are generational issues that we want to make headway. We know we're not going to exactly solve like the, the wage rates and the, and the income rates um, or the housing situation, but we can, make, we can make inroads and we can set realistic goals and achievable goals and stretch goals through this plan. And so that's something that we're trying to do. Um, ultimately, we're, through that, we are going to deliver a dashboard and really that implementation plan uh, for the team and their partners to execute. Oops, went the wrong way. And one last piece, I think one of the things we've heard loud and clear, and, and I think, I don't know if it's the pandemic or just, you know, this community is, is, is unique, I think, in terms of like how much people wanted to talk about the communication. I think that um, really, I think we need to think about as this plan rolls out, obviously, you know, I think as Act 47, I saw some of the, you know, the, the conversation around that. I think there's really, it's critical to communicate sort of what this plan is and, and view it as that inflection point. And so we're going to make some strong recommendations around really how to 
generate interest and investment in this plan to really get multiple people in the community, almost the whole community, right, sort of to endorse what this plan is trying to achieve. Um, we really think storytelling, we've heard there will be a couple initiatives around storytelling of both um, the legacy economy and the legacy community, but the new community and the new economy uh, of Scranton. And I think that's something that's going to be important to have people, um, you know, peer to peer storytelling, leadership storytelling, new resident storytelling. Um, and I think there's some, still some perception issues, both within, within the community and outside the community that uh, we'll be speaking to, um, you know, ideas about how to sort of change some of those perception issues. Um, one of the things we just, I was just mentioning, we saw that the, uh, the George W. Bush Institute just uh, declared Scranton a community of opportunity, which is great. Um, you need more of that, right? But that's one already that just, I think it just happened last week. So I don't know if our team told you, sorry about that, if they didn't. Um, we just read it yesterday. So, um, so I guess that's something, and that's a data-driven analysis. They looked at communities throughout the country. Um, and yeah, Scranton was one of a select mix that's considered that. I mean, again, hopefully you saw that in my preamble there at the beginning. We agree that there's a real opportunity here. Um, this is a moment in time. And um, yeah, we're hoping to really you know, deliver a plan that is readily implemented um, and really can give the, the energy and the traction for the community to move forward. So I condensed a 45 minute presentation into 20. So maybe I get two points for that. But Absolutely, we thank you for that. <laughs> Um, so I guess my, fir my first question is, so what's the next step? It's, it's putting together the, the plan as a whole. Is that what the next? Yeah, we're, we're working through. I mean, there's still, we're still looking for feedback on some areas. I mean, we have, a, again, those pillars are set up that we're, we're building out recommendations. A lot of that came from the community in terms of how we're going to solve things. We're fleshing those out, the who, the what, the what's going to be the impact. Um, and we're looking for impact, input from various stakeholders that were part of that. And then obviously, if you have ideas as well, we'd love to entertain those. Um, but that's the next step. So over the next 30 days, we're going to be diligently writing, following, doing final research, and putting together that plan. Uh, it needs to be completed by the end of March. It'll be sooner than that, obviously, to get through an approval process. So the next 30 days is the critical input period. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? I follow have a up. Quick question. So during this whole de data collection, um, Mike. Was, all right. During this whole process, did did, did um, your thought process think about because you talked about generating business interest and and uh, adverse perception, and I always hear, constantly hear that you know we need a county reassessment. And because we don't have one, it's preventing economic development. It's preventing generating business interest. It's preventing, you know, it's, and it's adding to the perception that no one wants to come here because of that. Uh, so was that any part of the thought process during this whole data collection? Yeah, absolutely. I think that was part. I missed one piece of what you said there. This, this uh, fan is like uh, really loud. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we definitely were thinking about the perception of the businesses. I missed the one part that you said there. Oh, the reassessment part of it. Reassessment. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've looked at it. I don't know. Yeah, it's come up through the conversations. We don't, I, right now, we don't have a strategy right now that's looking at reassessment that's completely built out. That's where we are. That's what I, I kind of had a question. Um, and, I, you know, I applaud you for this plan. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that proper planning prevents poor performance. Um, it's great once you have a plan together, but I've found, you know, in the positions that I've served in in the past, that there needs to be, you know, kind of like a grid or a roadmap where there's action planning, where people are assigned, okay, here's who's responsible. It could be multiple people or organizations, but as you, rather than letting this thing collect dust, People need to be assigned, and they need to be tasked, and there needs to be deadlines, and there needs to be, you know, meetings to say, okay, where are we? How are we progressing with this? What are we doing? What are the obstacles to achieving our goals here? Um, will that be part of this? Yeah, absolutely. That's the, I probably gave you shorthand of how we talk about it, but that's really this, to hear the, the ownership and implementation team. Again, that's city and partner. Some things we'll be asking the uh, city's partners to lead, other things that the city can be a leader on. And then, yeah, I think that impact, both impact and timeline, 
will be part of that. Um, as well as I think you mentioned, and I, I would agree that also identification of any risk factors, like what could go wrong and how do you course correct, that will all be part of what we're. Yeah, because there's going to be obstacles along the way. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, we haven't learned to adapt. How we for the go last over it, around it. Yeah. However, yes. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I appreciate you presenting in such a short period of time for us, and we do have the PowerPoint to be able to look a little bit more at the at the detail, but. Um, you know, I think starting off with this as an initial step, uh, I think will be really helpful for the city. I've been looking forward towards us having some more strategic planning for a while now. And, and as you said, we can really implement uh, things that will help us, you know, 10, 20 years from now. Uh, and I'd love to, to see that more forward thinking uh, for our city. So, um, yeah, I look forward to the next steps. And I feel like it also did include a lot of the things that were on my mind or what I've also heard from from residents. So I feel like that definitely uh, resonated um, the, some of the, the pieces that you uh, pointed out in this. So thank you. Great. So it seems that the, you have owner occupied versus rental. So it seems that the amount of rentals in Scranton seems to be somewhat of a, an issue. It's higher, right? And I think, yeah, it creates, um, yeah, there's a variety of issues that could get created. I think we've, we've seen some of the neighborhoods that, that, you know, that is an issue that you want to see more home ownership or local ownership <laughs> of, of property. Yeah. Now, when we're looking into that, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking of some of the rental properties, things like that, maybe in the, the areas of the schools and things around. Have you taken pilots into consideration and how that, how 36% of the, um, the city is off the tax rolls due to the pilots? Uh, or tax exempt organizations right yeah I think yeah we are looking at some of the tax analysis um, piece of it I think that's partly to think about like, what the yeah what is the current and long-term impact of that so um, yeah that'll be that's part of the analysis to figure out uh, is yeah what can change as part of that Um, and Mr. Donahue has been in these conversations a, a lot too and then throughout all the years we've all worked together on school board and city council that we do need to do a HUP test. We need the funding for it. I, I'm hoping that we can carve it out this year. It might be that we need to do it next year. But um, we do need to do that in concert with the school district. Um, in, in talking with other cities, I don't think that our percentage of tax exempt properties is particularly out of line with where a lot of other cities are. I remember Early on, a couple of years ago, I brought this up, and the mayor of uh, Columbia, South Carolina, I think, said, well, you know, we, we have, it was something like double the amount of, that we have. It was just like their entire city was basically tax exempt. So uh, I think our challenge will be that the HUP test, we need to make sure that the tax exemptions are only going to those who entities that really truly should have that now. But then the other pieces are like this. How do we how do we grow what we have around some of these? Because some of some of the pieces, the the government um, entities, the the universities, those types of things. I think they're they're we want them to stay. They're here to stay. So we'll have to figure out how to how to grow around them. The other piece, um, which I'm not sure we had an opportunity to talk about um, in this last couple of months. So we did successfully get a code enforcement solicitor. Mary Claire Hayes has joined the team. Mary Claire, Eileen. Um, myself, Andrew Cotillo, is uh, going to be the first assistant solicitor starting March 1st. He's currently at HUD down in D.C. and is, is going to be joining us here with the team. He's very housing focused. We're really going to be looking at this, the, the rental registration pieces, the housing ordinances. We want to really look at it and rebuild it from the ground up so that we can be you know, trying to get the policy and, and quality of life outcomes we want via our ordinances and our enforcement. So there's a lot of work ahead. But I'm really excited about the, the team that we've got to build on some of the findings from, from this. Glad to hear we'll be working on that first piece. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. And, you know, if, if we have any further questions, we will reach out. Thank you uh, for coming in. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll sure make sure you have the slides. My contact information is on the last slide, so okay. cell phone and everything. Thank you. I sent them here. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, and then Mr. King, we can we can send you where it's not completed yet, but we can send you the Excel sheet we're working off of that shows the 
the ownership and those timelines and some of that build out that I know that you're envisioning. Um, we can just get a just a, and yeah, thank just you very much. Moment I, in actually, time. just lastly on that point, we have to tie it into the whole region too, right? Because it's not you know what what we do here in terms of economic development isn't just in our walls. It needs to be tied into you know the whole region around us because we are the driver you know for all of northeastern pennsylvania whether people want to admit that right. or not but and and a lot of the partners that we're working with are are for our regional right you have the greater scranton chamber of commerce you have um the scranton area foundation that is not just scranton you've got the uh, the institute um between luzerne and lackawanna counties the universities and the colleges that it's it is definitely a larger than just our, yes. our city limits in scope um, but what's great about having this data and I'm so excited that we've had had this opportunity to work with with Rich and his team it, it gives us also the data we need to show how Scranton is different from some of some of the other areas and um, we need to make sure that we're you we're creating the tools that we need in Scranton for that for those unique things some of the pieces are congruous between the whole county and us some of these like the the rental rates are going to be very different in Scranton than they are in the rest of the area so all right thank you all great thank you very much thank you um we'll take a two minute recess and then we'll start our meeting in about two minutes thank you visit ectv.network for the ectv program schedule city and county meeting rebroadcasts and more ectv electric city television live municipal broadcasts on comcast channel 19